Ferrari's 2024 season has seen quite a steady uprise, and after the latest discoveries in Australia and Suzuka, the team is now confident they can fight Red Bull for race wins more frequently in 2024, starting as early as in China. But with the advantage still way in favor of Red Bull, could Ferrari actually do something to close up the gap? And if so, what is their primary source of finding this long-wanted pace for race wins? It goes without saying that Ferrari merged as the second fastest team on the grid, and some of the latest findings about the car have further encouraged the team to seek more performance out of what seems to be quite a solid platform. Although the Maranello team expected to be challenged in Suzuka by McLaren due to the natural strength of the MCL38 in the high-speed corners, the perfect tire management, which was minimal on Leclerc's tires, made up for a great weekend that saw both of the SF24 half the deficit to Red Bull in a matter of six months. Now, in China, the team won't bring any upgrades, just like they didn't in Suzuka and Melbourne. However, the nature of the circuit is one that is favoring the SF24 a bit more than the RB20, which could be very well utilized by both Leclerc and Sainz. Even with the first step of the zero-part design that Red Bull are going to further exploit in Imola, the team was not able to put the car in the optimal operating window like Ferrari, and their tires degraded a lot more, which could be a massive issue ahead of the upcoming GP due to the new Park for May rules and the sprint weekend format in general. The first sprint weekend will take place in a circuit that hasn't been raced on for five years, and although that fact itself is bizarre enough, the new regulations have seen drastic changes in the car's looks, specifically in the tyres, which Fred Vasseur feels will be the biggest challenge to tackle in the upcoming race. Of course, the temperatures will play their role as well, but with an expected air temperature of 19 to 23 degrees on the main event on Sunday, the cold tarmac won't bode well with the 18-inch wheels of the cars. And when talking about this matter, Vasseur went on to say, I think this race will be a difficult one, but if you have a difficult one for everybody, then we will be in the same situation. The biggest question mark for me will be the tarmac, because the layout of the race we know, and probably compared to the last event, we will have colder conditions. We do not know the roughness of the tarmac, and this will be the key for the weekend. On the other hand, Carlos Sainz went on to talk about the resurfacing of the tarmac in China, something that should have a negative effect on the tire degradation due to the highly abrasive asphalt that is now present in Shanghai. And when talking about this matter further, the Spaniard went on to compare the track to what could be an Istanbul 2.0 race, where total chaos happened after the resurfing process of the entire track. Speaking about this, Science added, I think China is a race circuit is a great one. I think it's one of our favorites for everyone. It is just a great racing track and a track that offers a good possibility to overtake. So a sprint makes sense to have it here. At the same time, it's what we said in the driver's briefing. We say to the FIA and Formula One, with these kinds of cars to go to a track with one hour of practice and straight into qualifying, with the regulations that they put us in, I think it's not a good choice to choose to put the sprint after four or five hours of absence. We also heard there has been resurfacing going on, so Istanbul 2.0 may be on the cards. Yeah, I hope not. But what Ferrari does know is how to set up their car for the least amount of tire degradation, and considering the fact that this sprint weekend will have two qualifying sessions, one for the sprint race and another one for the main event, the Marinello team will have two redemption chances at starting at least in the front row, then trying to beat Red Bull in the battle of the tire degradation. Furthermore, Vasseur stressed out that this is exactly where the strengths of the team's performance throughout the weekend lay, and if they're able to lock in the car in the perfect setup on Friday for the sprint session, then they will have more than enough time once Park for May reopens and a bit of change could be added to the car's setup. And this is really a lot of potential in which Ferrari are putting their hopes. The one-hour testing session, which will take place right before qualifying for the sprint weekend, and when talking about this matter, Verstappen stressed that coming onto a track that hasn't been visited in five years, when he only had five race wins behind his name, is not the smartest thing to do. Elaborating further, he said, 
I think it's not great, let's say it like that, to put the sprint event in China. Because when you have been away from a track for quite a while, I think you never know what you're going to experience, right? So it would have been better to have a normal race weekend here. But on the other hand, it probably spices things up a bit more, and that is maybe what the sport wants to see. But from a purely driving perspective, performance perspective of the sport, I think it's not the smartest thing to do. Apart from Verstappen, both Helmut Marko and Christian Horner raised their concerns about the competitiveness from Ferrari, saying that they have seen quite a lot of progress made from the Maranello team in the past two races that they cannot really neglect or turn a blind eye to. After the latest statement of Newey in which he said that a team cannot find as much performance as they hoped for before the 2024 season started, which could be understood as good news, considering the fact that they're reaching perfection, there have been doubts raised over whether or not Red Bull was in the right to chase the new concept in which they were pushed into by their own success. And now, with a stable platform coming from the SF24, as well as some great strategies and setups that have been proven to be pivotal for good results, Ferrari will be knocking on Red Bull's door a lot more frequently for race wins and podiums, potentially putting Perez in a very dangerous spot considering the fact that he was not the best number two driver in the past couple of years that the Austrian team could have had, even though he helped Red Bull score the first one-two finish in the Drivers' Championship since they entered the sport in 2005. Be that as it may, slowly but surely, Red Bull is starting to show signs of weakness, and although this is far from what Ferrari needs in order to proclaim themselves as legitimate legitimate championship contenders, it is always nice to see sparks of hope that could trigger something much bigger. For example, the closed regulations as well as the regulation cap go on to show that once the teams understand what needs to be done, we can have a bit of a closer racing at the front, and although the results do not show that directly, Ferrari's progress in the past six months has been quite motivating, to say the least, and all under the leadership of Fred Vasseur. But in order for us to see what Ferrari is really capable of, we would have to wait for the Imola upgrades because this is the track onto which the Maranello team would try to extract as much performance out of the car as possible and see whether they have it in themselves to fight for race wins. Of course, the 2.0 Evolution version of the car does have a big burden on its shoulders even before it was introduced because the tire management from Ferrari and the performance being locked out of the car have happened without any upgrades being brought to the car. So it only begs the question, what will happen once the car starts to evolve? To make things even more worrying for Red Bull's dominance in 2024 and potentially 2025 due to the small to no changes that will happen on the cars, this is just the first out of the three massive upgrade packages Ferrari tends to bring throughout the current season. Not to mention that from 2025 onwards, the ever-competitive spirit of Lewis Hamilton is also joining the team. But it seems like we won't have to wait a full year to see a bit closer action on the track, and this is what the entire F1 world had been hoping hoping for quite some time amid the Red Bull domination. With all this in mind, do you think that Ferrari has what it takes to bring the battle back to Red Bull? And more importantly, do you think that in China, the Maranello team will take a huge step forward and will prove to us that this season is anything but over? Let us know in the comments below.